Hello everybody here, it's Lewis from Physics Online. Now I have a document here, uh, a great bit of summer reading, and this is in response to some proposals that were put forward back about a month ago. And it's about changes to your exams in 2021. Now they've uh, put this uh, thing out for people to review, they've asked people's opinions, and they've made their decisions. So these are the changes that will affect you over the next year, it's going to affect your teachers, and it's going to tell you exactly what's going to be in your exams in 2021. Now the big thing is that for physics, there's basically no change to the content whatsoever, both at GCSE and A-level. So everything that's in your course specification, you have to learn all of it. The only change is that you don't actually have to do all of the practical activities. Instead, you can watch a demo or you can see a video of it online. And this year, I'm going to be spending a lot of time making physics videos where I go through every single practical experiment that you need to know about for your physics course. Now, um, if you actually have a look in the document itself, um, and you can download it yourself and have a read through it, there's loads of stuff here and it talks about all of the different subjects that you might be doing. Now they've got the summary of the decisions, um, and for some subjects, you know, things like history, English literature, uh, drama, things like that, there's a lot more changes than there are for science. But you can read all about it and see how that affects the subjects that you do. Now, this thing over here, this is important they're not going to change the length, the number, or the format of the exam papers. So when it comes to looking at the 2021 papers, they're going to be the same as what there was in 2019, 2018. And actually, in a way, that's quite good because your teachers know how to uh, prepare students for these style exams, and all of the past exam papers that you can see online, these are going to be really useful when it comes to preparing for exams in the future, especially for science. Um, other things uh, include the fact that, uh, yeah, um, for English literature at GCSE, there's going to be more choice about what you do. There's no requirement to necessarily do the field work um, for geography. Um, but again, all of the details are in this. Now, changes to the exam timetable. When are your exams going to be? Because don't forget, and you won't forget, you spent a lot of time not being at school. Now, they haven't confirmed what's going to happen to the exam time timetable in 2021. Now, one idea is that you put all the exams later in the year. So rather than doing them in May and June, they can happen in June and July. Now, the problem is if you push the exams back, there's going to be less time for people to actually mark the exams, to check all the marking, to come up with the grade, grade boundaries, sort out the results and send them out to schools. And if you put the results day back, going from sort of mid-August to late August, that's going to really affect people because they need to know their results for GCSE when it comes to looking at college or sixth form. And people at A-level, they need to know what they're going to be doing in terms of going to university. And those dates are there for a reason. And if you have exams later in the year, there's going to be then less time to actually get all the results sorted. And don't forget, it's often teachers marking um, exam papers. They're going to be busy teaching. And, you know, if it gets pushed later on, there's going to be less time for those teachers to actually get all of those exams marked. So at the moment, there are no dates for the 2021 exam thing, but I suspect they're going to be more in June than starting in May. And hopefully that means there's then more teaching time in schools to prepare for exams. Um, so yeah, there's loads of stuff here. Um, one thing it did look at was about how this might affect some students. Because quite frankly, if you're a student who's going to an independent school, you probably have more resources at home, you might have been doing more online learning, and you're probably better prepared than maybe some students from different backgrounds. And it does say about uh, you know students who are maybe young carers, uh, people with um, SEND, uh, maybe BAME students as well, and they don't really have an answer about how you know some people have been more affected than this pandemic than others. But effectively what they said is these are national exams and it's very hard to um, adjust the exam to take into account the fact that some people have been more affected than others. Um, there's also the appendix here, and again, just going through this appendix, um, biology, chemistry, combined science, and later on physics, what it says is that there's, um, at GCSE level, uh, permit the observation of demonstrations and or simulations to cover the required apparatus and techniques. Now, rather than having to do these core or required practicals, you don't physically have to do them yourself, 
but it's you still need to know about them. You still need to know about how to measure and then calculate density, for example. But rather than it being a whole class practical where all of you take the measurements, it might be that your teacher at the front is doing a demonstration of that equipment. And this might be difficult if you're not actually in a science lab for all of your science lessons. Um, but videos are, or simulations are going to be acceptable. And again, that's something that I'll be making for you. So I'm gonna go through all of the practicals that you need for the physics part of the course. Um, you can see some subjects haven't really been affected that much. Other ones, you know, these kind of practical subjects, dance, DT, drama, they're gonna be affected a lot more. You can find out all you need to know in this document. Um, I would say that uh, GCSE maths hasn't been affected. Um, and again, you can see physics here. All you need to do is watch the demonstrations rather than do the practical yourself. But you still need to know all of the content. When it comes to A-level, um, let's look through this. Um, something I did notice that pretty much most people doing physics are doing maths as well. No change to maths. So your A-level maths is the same as it would have been otherwise. And again, when it comes to physics, for AS level, for anybody still doing AS levels, you just need to observe the practicals. You'd actually have to do the practical yourself. If you're doing the full A-level course, though, um, then there's still this thing where you have this uh, CPAC, the Common Practical Assessment Criteria. This gets you a practical endorsement at the end of the course. And basically, you still need to do some practical, but you need to do the minimum amount of practical to show and demonstrate that you've got the skills. Now, for a lot of you going into year 13, you'll have done practical work at the start of year 12, which will probably cover most of that. And if you're just starting A-levels, then there might be obviously some disruption to practicals in the next few months, but there will be time over the next two years for you to get some more hands-on. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. So, um, right, basically, at least you know where we are at the moment. Um, it's still the start of August. Things might change during the year. But basically, um, you know, effectively, you need to know the same amount of content. And this is important because if they were to take content out, it would be very hard to decide which content you're learning at GCSE isn't important. And ultimately, that would then mean people going on to further study if they're doing A-levels, or maybe people doing A-level material going on to university. It's also important that it's very hard to actually find out, you know, find and decide what could be taken out. And they've decided that in order to get to the next stage of education, it's all important information that you need to know. Now, it is going to be hard for you, um, especially going into schools, which are going to be a bit more disrupted than normal. But don't forget that even though there's been a massive lockdown, effectively during that lockdown period, you've missed two weeks at Easter, you've missed a half term, and you've missed a six or a seven week summer holiday. Now that is over, over two months of holiday when you wouldn't be doing any work anyway. The other thing is that the term of school that you did miss was the summer term, which quite frankly is the time when people start to relax a little bit more. There might be end of year exams, okay, it's not relaxing, but there might be end of year exams that you're preparing for, and that means you're not necessarily learning new content. And then there's that last week of term where everybody just watches videos and don't, doesn't really do much work. There's sports day, there's other trips and activities. So though you've missed a lot of school, it's no, maybe not as bad as you think it might be. It's not like you've missed a solid five months of just learning new content. Now, what can I do to help you? Um, well, I don't know really, I'm doing whatever I can. Um, there will be live streams when it comes up to the exam time. There's also all of my videos I've made which cover all of the content that you need for GCSE and A-level physics. So that's stuff that you can watch at home in your own time to support all the work that you're doing in schools. I'll also be making a lot more work this year that actually looks at the practical skills to actually show you the practical experiments that you won't necessarily be getting hands on uh, in the classroom. And don't forget, of course, that you can subscribe to me on YouTube to stay updated with all of my updates. And also you can go to my website where you can access hundreds more videos um, for both GCSE and A-level. So let me know what you think. Um, it's not perfect, but I think it's, um, it's just the way it is and there's nothing we can really do to change it now. So basically you've got to learn the same amount of stuff. You won't be doing the practical things. And if you want to find out more information, just have a read through the document. It's quite boring, but it's the appendix that says for each subject what the changes are going to be. Anyway, um, stay tuned for more videos. I'll be doing more stuff over the next few months. And uh, yeah, that's, um, that's what I'm gonna be doing for the rest of the day, actually making some practical videos. So I'll see you soon. Thank you very much.